Welcome to the Mean Potatoes Podcast. We're here with Dakota Hoagland, who is the co-owner of Wovi. 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 Yes. I said it wrong. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. W-U-V-V-Y. Yes. Yep. You got it. I am an owner of a Wovi. Yes, you are. And tell us what it is. Okay, Wovies are bamboo blankets. So they're basically like baby swaddle material, the super buttery, soft, stretchy. But we're like, why don't like adults have this like amazing fabric too? So we kind of turn it into a big size of it and they all pack down into a drawstring bag. So great for travel, great for the beach, the movie theater. The sand actually shakes like right off of them on the beach. So that's another great thing or obviously just at home. But yeah, my mother-in-law actually had made blankets like this for a long time before we even started the business. She made them for her kids. And then all of my husband's friends, they all like were obsessed with the blankets and they had to have one. And she's like, I'm not making these anymore for anyone. (laughs) So my, that's when my husband approached her and asked if we should go into business together and start selling them. So that's kind of how we got into this. So it's yeah, family business, small business, but yeah, we're working with it. Very cool. So mine, I think, is kind of a tan mm-hmm. color, and I don't know where the bag is anymore, <laughs> but I just scrunch it up uh-huh. and throw it in. Yeah. You can even throw it in your pocket. Yeah, super packable for sure. And the baby swaddle was foreign to me, mm-hmm. um, but there's lots of things that babies have that adults should. I know. Agreed. And uh, the whole swaddling, I've, n- I've never swaddled a baby. My wife has a lot. Um <laughs> Apparently they like it, yeah. but for me, it is a poncho, a shade <laughs> device, a blanket, mm-hmm. um, and you can just kind of beat it up. Yeah. I don't know if that's what you guys want, No, but yeah. that's what I do. Well, we, we made sure ours were bamboo especially, because some of the competitors are like polyester mostly, so we made sure we were bamboo, so it's like higher quality, it's way more durable, washes really well, so yeah, the bamboo aspect of it will like help the longevity and everything, but yeah, you need to find your bag. That's the best part. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm not very good at using things the way they're they're supposed I to. I know. I actually fold mine up a lot in the bag. And like even on the airplane, if it's not too cold or anything, I'll use the blanket in the bag as a pillow. And it's like the best airplane pillow I, I've ever tried. So there's yeah. another tip. <laughs> there you go. It's a Swiss Army knife. Oh, yeah. There you go. Pillow, Lots of different blanket. uses. There you go. Um, all right. So you guys established that your mother-in-law could not at scale... Mm-hmm. make blankets for everyone right. that wanted to. So with most good things, most businesses, there's a little bit of a pain point or an opportunity that could be uh, seized. If you don't know what you're doing with like factories and procurement and supply right. chain, uh, you're starting from scratch. Mm-hmm. How was it for you guys? It was really hard. We, I mean, yeah, we didn't really know where to start. So we started here in the U.S. We, my mother-in-law kind of just did some research googling like what is local around Utah where we could kind of have them made and pick them up. So we started in a small factory up in Centerville, Utah with just very low quantity at a time and that worked for a while but we kind of grew out of it a little bit. The quality wasn't where we wanted it and they couldn't do a lot of things that like a bigger factory could. So the first ever like small like neighborhood market we ever did was here in Vineyard, Utah. And we met a guy there who had a hunting company. It's called Vooney Gear. So shout out to them. He was such a big help. He introduced us to someone who kind of is the middleman between um, like a factory in China. So we were able to like make that connection with her. And I mean, that was the first thing we have ever did. So it's, it's always being in the right place at the right time, which is like a hard answer. But we wouldn't have known where to start if we hadn't met him. So, yeah, that was like a big blessing being able to meet him and being connected that way. So that's been a huge help. It's obviously bigger commitment, like way high minimums and different things like that, but it's much better quality. Um, Like we would love to stay in the US production wise, but the quality just isn't there all the time and the pricing as well is a big problem. So yeah, yeah, we wish there was a happy medium, but unfortunately, yeah, that's just the way it's had to go, but we're very happy with the result and the product is much better, so. Yeah. Yeah, we're super happy with it. Um, for those that have never done manufacturing in China, you mentioned a minimum. Mm-hmm. What are some key takeaways of how it works? So we personally have had like eight colors. We knew we were going in. We wanted to order eight different colors. So 
based on those colors, they gave us like a minimum of 500 per color that we had to do. And we could break that up between our three sizes. So yeah, we had eight colors, 500 of each, and then each size cost obviously a different amount. So, and then on top of that, there was shipping, which we ordered probably at the worst time ever during COVID. So all the freight from China, like overseas was insane. So now that um, like material prices are going up, the shipping's actually gone down a lot. So hopefully as, yeah, the material prices are going to raise, we know that, but the shipping prices are going down. So hopefully that's going to make up for it. But yeah, the minimums, I mean, we've had to, yeah, obviously loans and things like that, especially being a small business, but it's nice having our in-laws to be able to be backers for it. So it's been good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Heaven forbid it all work out in sequence where shipping is affordable and materials are affordable. It's I know. Just Wouldn't that be nice? Teeter totter. <laughs> I know. I think that's just the way the world works. I know. I know. You got to be ready for anything. And that's, yeah, margins too. You got to like give wiggle room for things like that. But yeah, it's kind of crazy. All right. So you get to that point, which is a lot, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's international commerce for Pete's sakes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not for the faint of heart. Um, now you need people to buy. Right. Your stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, who was kind of designated as the marketer, sales, revenue generator mm -hmm. in your group? So, it's yeah, we have four of us. So my in-laws, me and my husband. So it's kind of interesting the roles we each have because obviously my husband and my father-in-law, they have their own careers. So they're um, a little less hands-on, but me and my mother-in-law probably do the most day-to-day. So I'm the social media girl. I'm, yeah, TikTok, all of that stuff um, for mostly our direct-to-consumer. My mother-in-law is mostly in charge of the product development, communicating with the, the factories and different things like that. And then my father-in-law is actually an architect. And so he is really helpful with, like, designing our booths for trade shows. He's built our whole thing. Everyone always asks us where we get him. We're like, we promise he doesn't want to make you one. <laughs> And he's, yeah, he's built all sorts of stuff for us, like displays and things like that. My husband, he's just really good at like being practical, talking us down when we have crazy ideas. He's that very much the practical one. Um, good decision maker. But yeah, we all communicate very well, the four of us. Um, the first year we were in business was we were mostly focusing on our direct to consumer, which is really hard right now. I mean, I owned a jewelry business when I was in high school, actually, and it was much easier to grow on Instagram back then. But as time's gone on, it's become much harder and it's way more focused towards like ads, paying all that stuff for that. So we tried that out for a while and I mean, it's great, but it takes a long time to build that. So this um, past year, we've started really leaning into the wholesale side of things. So we've started doing trade shows and that's gone really well for us. We just got back from Atlanta this this month and we just went to Las Vegas as well for it's called market and it's been really successful tons of buyers legit buyers and yeah we're really excited to keep growing that very cool mm -hmm. so these buyers uh, represent stores retail yes. establishments mm -hmm. and they buy a certain allotment yeah so we usually have a minimum of like $350 for an order we actually, our last, like, sh we usually do a show special where it's, like, 10% off or something like that. We did no minimums at this last show. We're just confident they'll get it and they'll like it and they'll reorder. So it's kind of a good incentive for people to even just try it out. But, yeah, people think I'm crazy, too, because me and my mother-in-law do these trade shows together. And everyone's like, how do you go stay in a hotel room <laughs> with your mother-in-law for a whole week and do business? But she's really awesome and we're, like, really good friends. We're really close. So it's been good. But Yeah. A lot of people would say that's insane, yeah. but <laughs> if you're both like kind and civil, then it should work out. Yeah, right? no, it's great. We get along really well, so it hasn't been a problem. <laughs> yeah, very cool. So throughout America, there are a lot of people buying direct, mm -hmm. but then you guys have kind of now a field of vision of where the hot spots are and, and what parts geographically of America your blankets are more popular. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, I would say, yeah, we've, we've shipped probably to every state now, but I think there's randomly a lot in Washington that love it, California, a lot of East Coast, which is so funny. I, I think for our wholesale side, we've gotten a lot of California, 
we've started kind of getting into the East Coast, but definitely most in Utah right now because that's kind of how we started was just local, but we've started to branch out. It was we've gone wholesale and paid for ads and things we want to expand throughout the country. So, yeah, I'm always interested in kind of first time entrepreneurs, and in this case, like how you come up with pricing. Right. How did you guys do that? So yeah, that was the thing that we had to kind of grow and learn when we were manufacturing in the U.S. The pricing was just much higher, and but we didn't want to charge too much more than our competitors, so our margins really weren't great. However, when we switched over to China, we knew we needed to take this opportunity to be able to charge what we need to to make a good profit. So I think basically what happened is you double it from what you pay your cost. We doubled it for wholesale, and then you double that again for your retail pricing. So that's just kind of the formula, I think, that is pretty standard. So we were kind of scared to do that at first, but then after a while, we just realized that's business, that's how it works, and that's how we'll be able to make it if we charge what we deserve to charge, basically. So, Yeah. And I am not familiar with anything social media. I don't Mm -hmm. have any of it. Um, I know it's ebbed and flowed, and there's new ways to do it. I know you can pay somebody famous theoretically to Mm -hmm. use your your product, but I do know that if somebody's happy with it, Mm -hmm. they'll tell a friend or buy it for uh, their sister. Right. And that's free. Yeah, exactly. Yep. I know we've we've dabbled a little bit in the influencer marketing where, yeah, basically you just send product on a gifted basis to different influencers who will accept it and you just hope that they'll post. And a lot of the times they do, which is great. It's just interesting to see sometimes an influencer will have 300,000 followers and they'll post and it won't really make an impact. And then sometimes an influencer with 80,000 followers will post and it will like give you so many followers. So it's just kind of crazy. It's hard to know where you should put the money into when it's hard to kind of gauge who's going to bring a good impact or not. So that's kind of been hard. We've kind of steered away from that recently, but just kind of allocating money somewhere else rather than that but yeah yeah we've seen success um, yeah the past. i mean there's eight billion people on the earth and i know they each respond to something different it seems like exactly so i know it's a moving target mm-hmm. um you've mentioned competitors uh you guys obviously this is your baby you're all in and it's been uh very consuming i would imagine do you pay attention to competitors or do you not um probably at the beginning i used to more um there's just so many differences that it's just not super relevant anymore yeah like we have the bag which sets us apart the bag that the blanket goes into which is has our branding kind of on the string and things which is nice um ours are double lined as well which some of our competitors are just like a single ply of fabric ours are double so they have really nice weight to them they're kind of heavy um but i check up on their social media every once in a while but nothing too crazy there's also like crazy patterns a lot of the times and we just keep it very plain simple like popular trending colors it's kind of what we lean into but yeah not so much with the competitors lately but yeah well if you get too busy it doesn't matter right you just yeah to focus on yeah yourself. no time to do that um trending colors yeah <laughs> who defines those trends i know yeah so this last the first time we we ordered our first round of blankets we were kind of limited because we were using this u.s source which they couldn't create like custom colors but since we moved to china we were able to pick pantone colors so you match kind of things out of a pantone book which pantone books are crazy expensive which is something we learned they're like a thousand dollars for a pantone book which is kind of funny yeah just to pick your colors so yeah it was definitely a learning process our my mother-in-law's niece is a really good graphic designer so she did all our branding and things like that and she gave us the advice to go somewhere like Zara to kind of see because they're always like ahead of the trend with color so we literally went to Zara me and my husband and my mother-in-law and we just walked around the store and it was crazy we were all like like all on the same page and we were just gravitating towards like all the same colors so Hmm. we literally picked clothes at Zara and bought them and went and matched them in our Pantone book and then sent those Pantone colors to our factory. So yeah, probably not the super conventional way of choosing colors, but it was pretty fun. Seems to be working. Yeah. (laughs) So obviously I don't know what I'm talking about now. The Pantone book, you're basically inventing your own colors. So Pantone, they have, they have colors already, but there's like a million shades of blue, a million shades of yellow, a million shades of every color. 
but it's hard to see it when it's a teeny tiny square. It's like literally fourth inch by fourth inch little square. Mm. So that's why we kind of, you want to make sure you have a bigger swatch of it to make sure you like it. And then you can take the little swatches and make sure it matches that exactly. Cause it's hard to pick out in a tiny little square. So it's just funny how much the book costs. We were shocked by that. Yeah. <laughs> so an idiot like me would say that's a blue blanket, but mm-hmm. it's not, it's something mm-hmm. else, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. There's a million shades. We could, we could do a new blue for the rest of our lives every couple months and we'd still have blues to go through. So, wow. I know it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, camouflage is that <laughs> we haven't dipped into the camouflage no. yet though. We have had some requests though for that. Yeah. Or like army green charcoal gray, which is a possibility in the future. So yeah, we'll see. We're going to lean more into our neutrals, which have been doing super, super well. So, yeah. So it just happened right now, but along those lines, I'm sure you get lots of unsolicited mm-hmm. feedback mm-hmm. and ideas. Yeah. How do you uh, deal with that? It's been um, interesting, especially going into the wholesale, which we were at our market. So these store owners obviously like to play it safe because they want to know that it'll sell in their store, which is totally understandable. So yeah, we, even at this last market, we didn't expect to sell out of things and we were just selling out of our neutrals, which is kind of crazy. So I think. Yeah, they like to play it safe, especially with the neutral colors. They always want what you don't have, it seems like. But hopefully one day we'll be able to expand out of our eight colors and have a lot more options, which we're working on. So, yeah, we're going to first expand kind of our neutral side. But the colors are so fun and what we really love. So we're going to obviously keep that as well. But Yeah. How do you guys, as a core group of Mm in-laws and husband, (laughs) um, set your metrics and set your strategy there's a billion different ways to do it how have you guys opted to do it I mean nothing super professional we probably should have a better system we just we know my father-in-law is very visual he creates like graphs and different things of like what's selling and how fast so he kind of knows like projecting towards the future what we need so that's basically just what what we've been doing and like we just use our Shopify systems to be able to tell so yeah, we kind of just project what we'll need, get it going with the factories, get loans organized and everything like that. But yeah, nothing too crazy. We don't pay ourselves yet. Everything goes back in the business. So we don't really have to worry about like any of the finances that way. But I mean, we do like to allocate it towards the different things within the business that we need. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy how much like photo shoots and packaging materials and all that can cost. So it's kind of crazy. Everyone gets paid along the the way yeah (laughs) some form or another yep somehow so what is going to be like a trending color and what do you think your best blanket through the end of this summer will be um well within the next couple months we're hoping to bring on a couple new colors potentially we're going for a charcoal gray and a bone kind of like a creamy tan so i think that our neutrals will continue to be really strong. And I think always bringing on a new color is always super popular. People are excited when there's something new. So I've got my bets on the bone color, kind of light for summer, but still neutral for the home. So, yeah. And, uh, the use cases, like I've already mentioned, I probably use it incorrectly, but I use it for a lot of things. (laughs) No, Um, correct. What do you, uh, what do you find people are using it most for indoor, outdoor, anything Mm -hmm. weird? Um, I don't know. I can't think of anything weird right now. I'm sure we've gotten plenty, but I think people are mostly using it at home just because it's there. But travel has been really, really popular. The second we say that to someone at a at a market or at a trade show, they just light up and they're like, that is such a good idea. So people don't often think about that. We try and market it that way, um, like all the different ways you can use it. But yeah, the second you say travel to someone, it just like something lights off in their head and they're just like, that is a great idea. So yeah. travel has been super popular because, yeah, you can use it again as the pillow in the bag or just as the blanket on the plane. And then you can also use it once you get to your hotel room. So that's been super popular. And if you're going to the beach on your vacation, you can use it on the sand. So, yeah, it's great. Multi-use. Um, what has been uh, the most eye-opening thing where you're just like completely caught off guard and you had to like scramble? Hmm. Probably we got our first big inventory from China much sooner than we anticipated. I think they under promise over deliver. So we were not expecting to get the bill right away. (laughs) So we had to kind of scramble and get 
um, a loan that we were not expecting to. We were hoping to get something a little better, but I mean, we're glad we got it much sooner than we thought, but yeah, we had to get a loan that we were not expecting on getting. So that was kind of probably the most stressful thing that's happened, but yeah, luckily it's all worked out. It's been okay. Yeah. <laughs> and overall being an entrepreneur is enjoyable or if you had a time machine, you'd go back and not do it. No, I definitely wouldn't go back. It's super nice. I mean, we run it out of my dad's business in the basement. We run it out of there. So we don't, and that's where I live as well, which is kind of crazy. So I get to live where I work and it's super nice. Sometimes I am like sitting there packaging for hours and I think to myself, I can't believe I don't make money for this yet, Yeah. <laughs> but I know it'll pay off one day and I'm excited for that. But yeah, I love it. I love working with my in-laws and I love traveling every once in a while to the different shows. So yeah, it's fun. It's I fulfilling bet. for sure. Good for you. And uh, if folks are interested in buying, mm -hmm. where do they go? Wubby.com. So W-U-V-V-Y.com. And we ship for free. So yeah, we have three different sizes. We have small, large, and mega. Large is probably our most popular size. If you're conflicted on what to get, that's like our one adult size. So it's a good one to start with. But yeah, you'll love it. Awesome. Well, congrats to you and your in-laws team. Thank you. Um, these are always like really fun conversations mm -hmm. where the idea turned out into a, a legit business. Mm -hmm. And you're actually enjoying it instead yep. of just like, oh my gosh, here we go. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Dakota. Appreciate yes. it. Thank you for having me. You bet.